بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Welcome to the second video in my series on languages necessary for Islamic studies a series of reading lists So the second language is Persian Arabic and Persian are absolutely fundamental. I already made the first video on Arabic. Arabic and Persian, however, for Islamic studies are like Greek and Latin, respectively, in that order, for a profound appreciation of Western civilization and culture. So if you really want to understand Islamic civilization and culture, you really have to learn Arabic and Persian. And I am doing this in a certain order. If you're going to do this, you really should learn Arabic first. And the reason for that is that in all of the other languages which we're going to talk about, of which the first one we're going to talk about is Persian, and maybe Urdu and Ottoman Turkish, all have a huge Arabic element in them. And then in turn, Ottoman Turkish and even modern Republican Turkish and then Urdu and even Hindi have a large Persian element. But let's not get off the point. So Persian is an extremely important language for Islamic studies. It's very much the second language of Islamic culture and civilization. And I was really interested in Persian from an early age. And in fact, I started teaching myself Persian when I was in the 10th grade in high school using this beautiful little book called Teach Yourself Persian. I'm sure you can probably still find this for very little money on you know, some used book websites. And it's great for self-study. It's by John Mace, and it's probably the cheapest option. Um, I also found out that the same person, John Mace, has written a very accessible grammar of Persian, simply called Persian Grammar for Reference and Revision. Uh, this is published by Routledge, though. Routledge books are usually expensive. Maybe you can find a used copy, but if you just want to start out, this is probably the cheapest option. It's very simple, very handy. You can put it in your, in your backpack. It's very light. You can take it wherever you want. So that's an excellent place to start, if you like. Um, in most university environments, at least when I was at university, especially in the UK, not so much in the US, you find this book by A.K.S. Lambton, Persian Grammar. It's again expensive book, but uh, you can because it's a Cambridge University Press. But you can maybe find a used one. You can certainly find PDFs, and she has a book called Persian Vocabulary that goes with it, which is also quite useful because there are a lot of um, irregular verbs and so forth in Persian, and she's listed a lot of those there. So I kind of played around with this in high school, and then when I got to university, we were they used some other book. It was at Indiana University. It was uh, by someone named Garno. Kerno Winfer, I think. But anyway, I, I would recommend um, either this or if you want just a simple standalone. I wish this had been around when I was learning Persian. This book, again, by the great Wheeler M. Thaxton. We already met him in our other video where I recommended his book on Quranic Arabic. This is really a fantastic treatment. Um, it is expensive, though. Um, this is a hardcover and it's from Ibex or Mazda publishers, you know, they're an expensive publisher. But this is an excellent standalone book um, for learning Persian and it's also very good in the sense that it gives you a whole uh, section where it talks about um, classical, you know, older sort of Persian forms and um, that makes it another very useful aspect of the book. Also. A lot of the modern Persian books like this one, like the John Mace, and as well as the Lambton books, they use modern typeface. There's a lot of old lithographs of Persian, and the and really Persian is the preferred way to write Persian is in, in, in a nastaliq, handwriting or calligraphy, and uh, there's plenty of examples of that as well in the Wheeler book, Wheeler Thaxton's book. So, as I said, he also talks about very formal kind of classical Persian, and, and that's important because it was pronounced differently, markedly differently from the way that it is, the, the Persian language is pronounced in modern Iran, particularly in Tehran. And there are differences. And so also you have a version of Persian which is spoken in parts of Afghanistan, which is typically called Dari. There are separate textbooks for Dari. I don't really, I haven't really used any of them, but I know that they're out there. I think this is all just pretty much a waste of time. And out of all of these, probably the best choice is Thaxton if you can afford it. Uh, but then if you want to understand sort of the different kinds of Persian, there was also something called Indo-Persian. And for that, this is actually very affordable. It's called the Persian Manual. It's a reprint by H. Wilberforce Clark, uh, who was a British military officer. And the drawback of this book is that the whole thing is written in transliteration, meaning that there's no Arabic font anywhere. 
you know, there's no Persio-Arabic font anywhere. But it's a very useful for so-called Indo-Persian. Now, if you want to understand, uh, again, there is a certain amount of diglossia in Persian as well, just like there is in Arabic, two different registers of the language. Each country is going to have its sort of colloquial version. Um, and so for that, there is this book, Colloquial Persian, but this is only good for Iran. It's not going to help you in Afghanistan. I have never been to Afghanistan, uh, but I can tell you that this <laughs> will not help you there. And then also uh, Persian, um, it's called by a different name, is the language in Tajikistan. There it's called Tajiki. In Afghanistan, it's called Dari. In Iran, it's called Farsi, Zawan Farsi or Parsi. And um, there was also something called Indo-Persian. So these are the books which I have found useful in my own studies of Persian. And of course, you will need a dictionary because I mainly just do classical Persian. I have this antiquated Steingasses, F. Steingasses Persian English Dictionary. This is extremely expensive, but I got the um, you know the Indian or Pakistani version, public you know editions. It was much cheaper. And um, more modern dictionaries. There's a dictionary by Hayim. Uh, he was an Iranian uh, Jewish guy from Iran who wrote a lot of different dictionaries. There was a very um, a much more recent one which they used when I was in graduate school. I actually don't own a copy. Uh, I never bought it. Um, it was uh, by Aryan Pur and Kashani, and I'm not really sure what if there's any other more modern dictionaries. Um, you know, why didn't I buy the Aryan Pur Kashani dictionary? It was expensive. I didn't want to spend money on it when I was in graduate school. And because I am a native speaker of Urdu, I needed far less help. Urdu and Persian are very closely related. I mean, it's like the relationship may be something like between, between, you know, Italian and Spanish or German and Dutch. So it's not hard for Urdu speakers to learn uh, Persian. So this is what I would suggest for the study of the Persian language. If you get interested in Persian literature, there are other books by uh, Thaxton, which are really good. Thaxton has a book called The Millennium of Persian Poetry, which has uh, selections from, you know, thousand years of Persian poetry. And he does them side by side. They're dual language. So he's got the Persian on one side, and the English on one side. Uh, and um, if you've learned Arabic first, then Persian also is uh, much easier to learn because there's, as I said, a huge Arabic element, although the words are often used somewhat differently than they are in Arabic. That's having to do when they came into the Persian language and maybe they only took one sort of nuance of the word and, and so forth. But anyway, I wish you every success in learning Persian. It's much easier than Arabic. And I think that you can acquire the rudiments, the grammar, and the whole verb system in about, um, again, 80 hours of classroom instruction with another three or four hours a day of, of drill and so forth. So you could, you could do that in a month if you did nothing else. Thank you for watching.